Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's web conference on participating transmission owner per unit cost for 2023. My name is Elena Coppola of Alford, representing ISO Stakeholder Affairs here at the California ISO, and I'll be facilitating today's web conference. I'm joined by Kaylee Zaberi, Senior Interconnection Specialist here at California ISO, and I'm just going to go over a couple reminders and housekeeping items before we get started. Um, so this call is being recorded for informational and convenience purposes only, and any related transcripts should not be reprinted without the ISO's permission. Um, this recording will be on the process webpage um, on kaiso.com, and you can find it there. Uh, the meeting is structured to stimulate dialogue and engage different perspectives, and uh, please keep comments brief, uh, professional, and respectful. And please try to refrain from repeating what's already been said so we can manage our time efficiently. Um, to raise your hand, if you've connected to the audio uh, through your computer, use the call me option. Select the raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen. Or if you dialed into the meeting outside of WebEx, you can um, hit pound two to get into the question queue. If you need technical assistance during the meeting, please send a chat to the event producer. Today's event producer is Adrian. Uh, and please state your name and affiliation before you make your comments. If you have any other questions uh, during the meeting, you can send them either to me, Yelena Couple of Alford, or to all panelists, and um, we will call on you and respond. And from here, the agenda, I'm going to hand it over to Kaylee to kick off the meeting, and then um, we will go over each of the seven uh, draft cost guides, and then I'll go over next steps and um, comment deadlines. Okay. All yours, Kaylee. Thank you, Yelena. I'm Kaylee Zuberi, Inter uh, Senior Interconnection Specialist for California ISO. Can you go to the next slide, please? Um, so today we're doing participating transmission owner per unit cost guides. Um, the ISO generate interconnection procedures require PTOs to annually update and publish their per unit cost guides for use during the current interconnection study cycle for estimating the cost of facilities required to connect to the ISO grid. Um, so now we will go through and have each PTO present their cost guides. Would you like uh, SCG and e to go with this time? Yes, go ahead. All right, I am going to share my screen and uh, Bruno, my colleague, will go over the substation portion. Let me know when you're able to see my screen. Okay, we can see your screen. Okay. Well, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Bruno Velosa. I am the substation engineer at San Diego Gas and Electric, and I will be going over the substation part of the sd &E unit cost table. Just like the rest of the other PTOs, we will we'll use the IHS global insight numbers for the substation escalation rates. Uh, this year, uh, the substation department implemented a new cost estimating system to replace our old estimating system that was used for many years. And as a result, uh, we this has updated several cost estimates uh, that increase and also several cost estimates also decreased uh, while we were uh, removing items that are no longer being done in the company, equipment that is not being used, updating uh, contract instead of uh, union work and other items like that uh, created those changes of decrease and increase in several cost estimates. Also, uh, we updated the unit costs were also escalated with the updated material, equipment, labor, and contractor costs, as we all know, uh, have increased over the past year uh, um, to a high level. Um, pretty much, that's pretty much nothing more to uh, that I'll be going over. Uh, that is all for substation. I will be now passing it on to Hai Latai from Transmission. Uh, Hai, if you want to proceed with the sure. transmission side. Thank you. Um, for the same reasons, uh, we had looked at the transmission costs for actual projects in uh, calendar year 2022. We have not noticed that much of a change from the different uh, voltage levels for transmission projects. Again, these are very high level uh, 
or typical transmission projects, which probably don't exist. You know, there's really no typical transmission projects, but there's a low, medium, and high complexity. As you can see by voltages, uh, they typically are the uh, same unit cost because as the voltages increase, there are fewer structures in between spans. And like Bruno said, we've used the IHS cost for escalation rates that are on this table here for inflation. Otherwise, um, there are nothing else that are really significant to go over with. I'll uh, pause right there. Thank you so much. Okay, there are currently no questions in the queue. Um, do we want to move to Yumi Miyazaki and team from SE? Okay. Um, do I have the presenter rights? Yes, you do. Okay. Okay. Let me know if you can see my screen. I can see your screen. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me know if uh, it's a good time to start or are we waiting for questions? Um, no, go ahead. Okay, so good morning everyone. My name is Yumi Miyazaki. I'm a project control advisor in the inter interconnection group within SE. My group is responsible for project managing and producing the final interconnection cluster study reports. We have assembled a team of subject matter experts here in a call. And for the next 10 minutes or so, we will go over our proposed unit cost guide for 2023. Each of our cost expert will address a specific section of the unit cost guide and they will point out highlights of that section. In a few cases, the scope has been updated to meet the current standards or requirements in our recent studies. I would like to suggest to please hold any questions or comments till all our presenter has completed their highlights. So let's get started. Our first presenter is Peter Tran. Thank you, Yumi. Everyone hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Peter Tran. I'm a manager in the major projects organizations in projects control. My responsibility includes the oversight for the development of the unit costs for substation as well as the high voltage transmission lines. I'm here to present SCE's 2023 unit cost update for the substation element and then provide high level overview of the methodologies. Um, the 2023 unit cost refresh included refresh of material pricing, as well as the labor wages and the overhead rates that applies. Uh, material pricings were extracted from our current and active projects. The labor rates are based on our current IPEW approved way rate. The, the overhead rates reflect SCE's t and current overhead rates for capital projects. Uh, at this point, I, I do want to introduce Dave Sarab to present the telecom portions of the unit cost. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Good morning, everyone. My name is Saurabh Dave. I'm the telecommunications engineer with Southern California Edison and my staff and I are responsible for supporting the cluster study reports by providing the telecommunications scope of work and estimates for all the interconnection customer requests. Uh, as you can see, the telecommunications 2023 cost guide is based on the 2022 guide and each of the unit costs have been reviewed and updated to the 2023 constant dollars. To update this cost guide, we follow the same process as last year, which involves reviewing the material invoices and jobs of the last three months of year 2022 to monitor the cost variances. We also compared this cost to last year's guide and noticed that there were a few changes to some of the telecom elements in the 2023 cost guide. Uh, as shown over here, the unit cost for the prefab building had increased due to the increase in the material cost and change in supplier for this item. Uh, the previous supplier of this prefab building no longer conducts business in the state of California. 
And also the lightweight equipment and channel bank terminal equipment cost categories were removed from this year's cost guide due to the traditional CDM technology reaching end of life. And it is getting replaced by the addition of the MPLS transport equipment category in the unit cost guide. Lastly, the assumptions undertaken to assemble this unit cost guide are listed separately under the telecommunications tab in this Excel spreadsheet. And that is all I have at the moment, and I'll turn it back over to Peter Tran and Viet Nguyen for their transmission cost updates. Thank you. Thank you, Saurabh. Good morning again. As uh, mentioned earlier, our high voltage transmission line unit costs were updated similarly to the substation unit cost elements. The transmission unit cost update includes the refreshing materials, refresh of the labor, and overhead rates. Our materials were extracted from current active projects. The labor rates reflects our current approved IBEW wage rates, and the overheads reflects SCE's current overhead rates for transmission and distribution capital projects. I would like now to transition to VIT so we can expand on the impact factors that are unique on transmission lines. Thank you, Peter. Good morning, everyone. My name is Viet Nguyen. I am a senior engineer in SCE's Transmission Engineering Group. Our group is responsible for the engineering and design of SCE's 220 kV and 500 kV transmission system. Earlier, Peter talked about some of the updates we had in our unit cost guide due to material and labor changes. And now I would like to discuss the impact factors of the unit cost guide. The SE unit cost guide attempts to account for variability of cost due to terrain, population density, and weather through the use of impact factors. Costs can vary widely due to these factors. We utilize various impact factors to try to account for increased difficulty. Mountainous terrain, for example, may necessitate either helicopter construction of the transmission line or require difficult access road construction. Higher cost micropile foundations could be required in forest areas, forest areas, for example. Areas of dense population may require higher mitigation costs like line transpositions or taller structures for electromagnetic field reduction. It is also possible we might have to keep structures under a certain height uh, near airports, which would require closer structure spacing and therefore additional structures to maintain adequate electrical ground clearance. Weather also plays a factor in that icing and high wind areas could increase the structural loading, thereby increasing the number of structures required or require bigger and heavier structures. This summarizes SE's methodology to estimating high voltage transmission line el cost elements. Next, we'll have Hugo Ayala speak on subtrans unit costs. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Hugo Ayala. I am one of the transmission estimators in the SE transmission organization. The team I work with have been supporting the cluster study reports by providing the sub-transmission scope of work and costs for the interconnection customer requests. The transmission 2023 cost guide is based on the same assumptions as the 2022 guide, and each of the unit costs have been reviewed and updated to the 2023 constant dollars. To update this cost guide, we follow the same process as last year. Our team reviewed the scope the work scope based on the assumptions and developed costs utilizing current labor, material, contract, and overhead rates. The costs are based on the assumptions of one SE crew working straight time. The assumptions undertaken to assemble this unit cost guide are listed separately under the subtrans tab of the Excel worksheet. The average cost increase from 2022 to 2023 was 2.87%. Thank you all for your time, and I'll pass it back to you. Thank you, Hugo. So for the lump sum cost section, um, SE has uh, provided a list of typical lump sum cost items in the guide. Some of these costs are likely to be included in the final cluster study reports. It is important to note that the unit cost guide excludes ITCC, corporate overheads such as PMB, pensions and benefits, admins and support, AFUDC, and payroll tax. These are allocated costs that will likely to be added to a project's total cost estimate and their final invoice is required. Next, I would like to pass it to Bruno to address our 2023 unit cost uh, escalation rates. Thank you, Yumi. Uh, can you please display the escalation rates and factors tab, which is the last tab? 
Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bruno Miranda, and I'm an advisor in the Regulatory Economics Division of the Treasurer's Organization at SCE. I'm responsible for cost escalation across SCE, including the transmission capital escalation rates presented in the 2023 Kaiser Transmission Unit Cost Guide. The escalation rates presented attempt to estimate the inflationary impacts of building transmission capital within our service territory. These rates should be applied to 2023 dollars cost estimates for estimating the cost in nominal or year of expense dollars for transmission projects in years beyond 2023. The escalation rates are based upon one source, the Andy Whitman Index of Public Utility Construction Costs, Electric Transmission Pacific Region. The forecast of the Andy Whitman Transmission Capital Cost Index is available in the S&P Global Market Intelligence Product previous known as Global Inside and IHS market. The forecast escalation rates are based upon the most recently available S&P Global forecast available at the time of the preparation. The vintage of the escalation rates is the Q1 2023 S&P Global data release, which was released on April 18, 2023. In this unit cost guide, the escalation index is rebased to one in the current year, which is 2023. That's all for me on escalation rates, and I'll pass it back to Yumi for final remarks. Thank you, Bruno. So, in conclusion, the 2023 proposed unit cost guide is SE's best efforts in forecasting SE's costs for generation, generator interconnection projects this year. Our estimators follows the recommended practice in accordance with Class 5 estimate conforming to the AACE guidelines. I also like to thank all of engineers and estimators for their efforts in developing and updating the unit cost guide this year. Now, let us know if there's any questions or comments. Thank you. Thank there are you. currently no hands raised in the queue. And there's nothing in the chat. Okay, thank you, SCE. Um, we will move to VEA, Daryl Holmes. Good morning. This is uh, Daryl Holmes from Valley Electric Association. Um, I'm a planning engineer with Valley, and I'll share our per unit, 2023 per unit cost guide. Um, first, I'd like to uh, thank SCE. We use SCE's escalation rates and factors. So thank you, SCE, for providing those to us. And then a little background. Uh, so SCEs are for 138 kV facilities. And in the past handful of years, we haven't had any actual cost because we haven't had any 138 kV construction. But last year, we did have some substation uh, construction on the 138 and the 2023 pre-unit cost guides reflect actual costs from our experience uh, of uh, those upgrades last year. And we did see some um, significant increases, especially with circuit breaker costs. Um, the uh, first element here, uh, ring, being, ring bus, that went up about 50% from last year. And about 40% uh, for the single breaker and 60% for the other breaker and a half uh, double breaker positions. And um, we seen a decrease in the, uh, the operating bus and bus sections. Um, that was overestimated in 2022. 2022. So we um, updated that, and that was a decrease about 50% in those costs. And uh, we had about a 100% increase in um, disconnect switches, um, including um, and the same price for relays. So the rest of the per unit cost guide. Um, is um, blank as it's lump sums, which are calculated as um, specific to a project. And then the transmission line information uh, or cost estimates, this has not changed from um, 2022. All those costs, reconductor removal, those remain static from 2022, other than the escalation rates. 
2023. So that's an overview of our per unit cost guide and the rationale for the cost increases that you see from last year, which is based on uh, actual costs VA encountered last year. With that, I'm open to any questions or comments. Thank you. Uh, there are no questions. Thank you. Thank you, Daryl. We will move to GLW, Jamie Hoffman. Sure. Uh, just give me a moment and I'll share my screen. Is everyone seeing my screen? Yes, we can see it. The numbers okay. look a little bit small, but thank you. I will try to increase the size. Um, good morning, folks. This is Jamie Hoffman. I'm a director of development for NextEra Energy Transmission. Uh, this is the 2023 per unit cost guide for Good Lions West with estimates for main equipment categories for voltages of 230 kV and 500 kV. Uh, with the existing grid lines west system currently at 230 kV. Broadly speaking, compared to last year's estimates, cost went up uh, roughly 10% across the board. Um, it varies by component, but year over year average, it's about 10% adder. I should mention that engineered equipment increased significantly. Uh, this includes transformers, breakers, et cetera. Um, mostly, this is driven by market demand and commodity prices increases in 2022, uh, namely steel, aluminum, copper. Um, we've also seen some increases in shipping rates, land, ocean, uh, as well as labor rates and uh, some other general inflation factors. Um, other than that, not too many other changes for us. Um, that really kind of concludes our general overview. Um, happy to take any questions at this time. Okay, there are no questions currently in queue. Great, thank you. Thank you. We can move to uh, DCRT, Emilio Rodriguez. Emilio, please share your screen. Yep, I'm sharing my oh. screen here. Um, oh, we have a question from Kanye Dorland. I'm sorry, um, Kanye Dorland from Public Advocates Office. Office, and I had a question regarding the cost increases. It sounds like uh, the utilities are saying they have a cost increase of about two, two, three percent, and Gridlions West is saying they have a cost increase of about ten percent. Um, is there anyone who can explain um, why the cost increase would be 10% for Gridlions West? Sure, this is Jamie Hoffman. Um, sorry. Well, we're happy to take on that question. Um, if you could put that in writing, we'll respond more formally. Um, but uh, yeah, at this time, I think we'll get back to you in writing. Okay, thank you. Okay, there's no um, other hands. Sorry, Emilio, go ahead. Okay, um, yes, uh, this is Emilio Rodriguez uh, from TCR Transmission. Um, Emilio, one second, please. Yeah, that was uh, going to say that, that Ali Amirali will, will take the introduction. Yeah, uh, so uh, hi, this is Ali Amirali. I am a senior vice president uh, with Lotus Infrastructure. We are the owners of the DC, uh, the DCRT is one of our portfolio companies. Uh, we are a single asset transmission company uh, and we have uh, the information that we will provide is typically going to be 500 kV for light transmission line and substation equipment uh, that we have been building in association with our uh, transmission asset. Uh, I've got with me Emilio Rodriguez or, and Ann Moon. Uh, Emilio is going to walk us through the costs that we have provided, the methodology for the cost increases, as well as as well as the indices that we have used. Uh, the information we are providing is our best estimate at this time. Uh, there have been significant. Uh, we have found that over the past 
uh, 12 to 24 months, there have been significant increases in both inflation as well as uh, the equipment costs. Uh, so, Emilio, I will turn it over to you to walk us through. And if there are any questions that we can field out after that, we'll be more than happy to. And if we can't, then we will provide the responses in writing later. Go for it, Emilio. Yeah, um, this is the 2023 uh, Generator Intercurrency Units Cost Guide. Um, our our prices are only for the five car five five hundred kilovolt um, section. Um, that's the only assets that uh, DCR transmission has. It's a it's a it's a transmission line five hundred kilovolt from Delaney substation in Arizona to Colorado River substation in California. Um, we have been using an escalation formula formula based on two published inflation indexes. Uh, a general inflation rates that uh, we use the International Monetary Fund uh, U.S. Uh, costu custom consumer prices change that was around 4.5 percent, and we uh, weighted that uh, for a 40 percent, and we also uh, use uh, the produce price index uh, by industry, electrical equipment, and appliance that uh, that is uh, published by the U.S. Bureau of, of uh, Statistics uh, with a 60 percent. Uh, the, the second index is 12.65%. Therefore, our aggregate escalation came to around 9.4%, which is lower than 2022 rates uh, increases that were around 9.7%. Um, this is what we have been implementing in this uh, in our cost uh, estimates unit prices to, for this year. As for uh, future escalation. Uh, we have also been using the forecasted IMF uh, inflation rates, average consumer prices. Those are um, in line with uh, around 2% escalation rates for, for the future, 2.3% for 2044, and then decreasing um, and coming back to the uh, target of 2% in 2026. Uh, those are, uh, this has been this modification study updates that we have implemented for this year. They were um, they were submitting in uh, January this year, therefore having capturing all information available by the end of last year. Mm -hmm. um, any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, um, thank you. We still have a hand from um, Kanye Dorland. Kanye, go ahead. Oh, geez, I, I meant to put my hand down. Sorry about that. Okay, I don't see any other questions in queue. Okay, we can go to Desert Link, Nicholas Schwartzbach. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Nick Schwarzbach, and I am the lead engineer on our asset management team supporting Desert Link. And I will be presenting Desert Link's 2023 per unit cost guide today. On the call with me is also Ross Holt, our senior asset manager for Desert Link. So to begin, uh, Desert Link only has the 500 kV system. So looking at our cost details, uh, we didn't have any major changes uh, or updates in our assumptions tab here in column L um, from our previous uh, year's guides. However, we did go through and update the costs to reflect uh, what we're currently seeing in the market. With inflation and supply chain issues, we, we've seen a significant price increase in our labor and materials, materials uh, compared to previous years. So we've gone through and updated those. Uh, to run through a few examples um, on the major items for a new three circuit breaker uh, ring bus substation, you know, th this cost you see here includes all the site prep and protection and control equipment. The land costs and permitting are not included and will be estimated on a case by case basis. For a new transformer, 500 to 30 kV, uh, these assume 600 MVA ratings. Uh, moving on to miscellaneous equipment, uh, starting with the shunt reactor, the cost you see here assumes 100 MVAR and three, fee, three phase. However, it does not include any circuit breaker positions. 
Moving next to IT, uh, this equipment was included in that lump sum substation cost above, and all individual equipment will be estimated on a case-by-case -case basis. For new transmission lines, um, these costs shown here, they assume no environmental permitting or right-of-way acquisition. That is the updates on cost details. Um, we did not have any new assumptions in this tab. And lastly, looking at escalation rates, um, all of the costs that were shown in the cost details are estimated in 2023 constant dollars and then uh, will be escalated over the years during which the project will be constructed. We updated our escalation rates using the electric utility construction cost forecast, which we got from IHS Power Planner report, uh, which is referenced below the table. That's all I have. Uh, open up to any questions. Thanks. Okay, there are currently no questions in the queue. Thank you, Nick. Um, we will move to Ashwini uh, Mani uh, with pg &E. Hi, good morning. I'm going to start sharing my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Uh, this is Ashwini Mani, pg &E. uh, I'm the supervisor for the Transmission Interconnection Planning Group. Uh, my team works on all the, the California ISO generation interconnection projects. We also work on large load interconnection projects. So, pg &E has completed updating our per unit cost spreadsheet for the year 2023. This was a multiple internal stakeholder process with input from substation engineering, land and environmental, transmission line engineering, project management and business finance. All of these teams are also actively involved in the generation interconnection and large load studies. So, a lot of the data that we updated with from these teams are based on on studies and actuals um, of projects that have been in service in recent time. Uh, we have also, like other PTOs, used the H I M S I H S Global Insight for developing the 2023 escalation rates. So um, I'm going to hand it off to Greg Seidel from the Substation Engineering Team, who will go over the uh, uh, cost updates for the substation equipment. Good morning, this is Greg Seidel. I'm a senior consultant electrical engineer for uh, pg and &E. I work in generation interconnection, large load, large load interconnection, and also PTO to PTO. The current uh, 2023 unit costs represent uh, where we have taken existing actual uh, project costs and then where we can Put those in and then we basically look at those at a certain particular voltage class we may not have all the voltage classes so we look at each at the the actuals for one voltage class and then we we, we may evaluate based on that uh increases in the in voltage classes uh anything highlighted in yellow uh is changes from last year's uh 2022 unit cost guide um the only one 500 uh, kV is in, in kind of an orange color uh, is that we've not done one as of yet, a 500 kV breaker and a half station. Uh, we most likely will have those costs in the future, but currently this is an, an estimated cost for that. Uh, you can scroll down and see uh, changes to uh, 500 230 kV uh transformers um transformer increase cost most of that as others have pointed out is due to material cost changes and availability or demand for, for those particular equipment uh, also in breakers uh, you see below uh, changes in cost and adding breaker and a half bays partial breaker and a half bays and full breaker nap bays and also double bus uh, additions uh, and basically uh, that 
is it. Chunk capacitor is always a lump sum. Um, we have not done some chunk capacitors in quite a while. And of course, breaker, breaker additions or replacements, uh, a little bit of an increase on those. Um, also on uh, DTT transmitter costs, those remain, uh, I think, unchanged from 2022. For some reason, those are highlighted. Let's see what is down below. Also, metering, PGE metering on Gensite, that increased uh, a little bit, and also pre parallel inspection compliance or basically oversight of the uh, third parties uh, generation substation has increased uh, a little bit. And that's probably due to mostly uh, escalation of uh, labor rates working with the uh, interconnection customers. And that's it from substation. Okay. Thank you, Greg. We will move on to a uh, transmission line groups update. Uh, Britt Gage, uh, please, please uh, go ahead. Yeah, hi, my name is Britt Gage. I'm a supervisor for transmission engineering uh, with customer interconnection. Due to the increase in construction costs, uh, we have increased transmission line costs by 5.3%, um, which considers construction, labor, and material increases. Also, based on actual costs from projects, um, the costs in per unit costs are it's dollars per mile. Um, and you can find additional details in the factors and assumptions section. I'm not sure if you want me to go line by line, but it, basically it's a 5.3% increase on each line there. Okay. Thank you. Uh... So this is um, the update for PG&E uh, and all of our uh, information, additional information are in the factors and assumption tab, escalation rates are provided here uh, and any other documentation. So uh, that concludes our update for the 2023 per unit cost. Um, are there any questions? There are no questions in queue. Thank you. Thank you, Ashwini. Okay, that covers all um, our presentations. Uh, if you could go to the next slide. Okay, so the next steps, um, you can submit written comments uh, to the 2023 PTO per unit cost guide by September 12th, and um, the link is there. Um, and then the final cost guides will be posted on October 3rd. Okay, I think that is everything. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, and that concludes our conference. You may now disconnect.